गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वी आर बैक अगेन एंड दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द फोर्थ कमिंग बजट बजट टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एंड वट आई एम गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन इज वट शुड यू एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम दिस बजट एंड वॉट यू शुड नॉट एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम दिस बजट लेट मी स्टार्ट बाई टेलिंग यू हाउ डिफरेंट दिस बजट इज गोइंग टू बी द बजट विच इज बींग प्रेजेंटेड ऑन फर्स्ट फेब्रुवरी विल बी अ यूनिक बजट इन फोर डिफरेंट वेज एट लीस्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द नॉर्मल ट्रेडिशन ऑफ प्रेजेंटिंग द बजट ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी हैज बीन अबेंडेड and we have advanced that government has advanced it to 1st february uh, that is one why have they done that that's because before the financial year begins on 1st april 2017 they want all the discussions and all the comments corrections modifications are approved before that so that we really start with a clean slate on 1st april 2017 that is the logic why the budget is being presented uh, for on 1st february that is first change second change is that for very long time the budget had made a distinction between uh, planned expenditure and non planned expenditure now that distinction has been abolished completely abolished and we are talking about distinction only between revenue expenditure and capital expenditure uh, so that is a second change the third change is that this year there will be no separate railway budget that's the third change railway budget has been subsumed under this uh, new uh, uh, new process of budget making uh, so these are some of the changes uh, which are going to be taking place uh, and that makes it very unusual uh, a historic budget it it is a historic budget because it is going to be presented against the backdrop of uh the big move the bold historic decision of demonetization so invariably implications of this for the budget would be the backdrop of uh, demonetization and whatever adverse effect that took place i have consistently been saying that demonetization is a great move it is going to be a short term pain and long term gain uh, medium to long term gain so the short term pain is almost over and this budget will probably will give out measures which will not only uh, make the longer or medium or longer term gain possible but it would also try to relieve it will provide relief to poor people for lower middle income group and others in this budget that is one of the expectations that uh, one could have now uh, whenever budget is presented remember that uh, first thing that you understand is that whenever a, a a group photo is given to you what is the first thing that you see the first thing that you will see in a group photo is where am i which is natural same thing happens when a budget is presented whenever budget is presented every indian would ask what is in there for me which is natural but as a conscientious citizen of this country what you must know is that you must have a complete perspective uh, a overall perspective of where do we stand and where are we going and what kind of changes are going to take place remember that budget which is presented uh, or which is going to be presented now is not only uh, account and accounting statement of income and expenditure of course income and expenditure are part of that they are the core of the income that government is expecting and the expenditure that they propose to make that is absolutely true but budget is not confined to only that budget is not limited only to that budget is an opportunity for the government to explain what kind of policies they are going to follow in the financial year starting from 1st april 2017 so this budget will be for the financial year 1st april 2017 to 31st march 
2018 financial year 1718 so during that year what are the policies which uh, what would be the government stance what would be the policies which are going to be followed so this budget like any other budget would be very very important the most important economic document in the sense that it lays out where does the indian economy stand where do you where do we want economy to go and what are the kind of measures that we are going to be taking to reach there the our goals for the indian economy that is what you should be looking at uh, now uh, in any budget in any budget this budget becomes very special because it is coming against the backdrop of uh, the demonetization so the first question you know what happens is when budget is presented they keep on throwing at you the numbers and nobody understands or remembers those numbers you know so many lakh crore of this and so many lakh crores on that those numbers are not really important and you don't have to pay any attention even the speaker who is giving out those numbers wouldn't remember that but there are some critical numbers that you must see most important number that you must be looking at it what is the fiscal deficit projected as a ratio of gdp that one number is the most important number the ratio of projected fiscal deficit as the ratio of gdp now every budget every budget the finance minister would give away or in explain what is going to be the deficit next year and what he or she would do is that whatever was the budget ex expected last year or the current year whether those expectations have been fulfilled so those are the two numbers that we must see what was the expectation for 2016-17 that is the current year which is going to end on 31st of march the expectation was fiscal deficit of the government central government would be about 3.5 percent will that be met my answer is 100 percent it will be met although it was a tight target it would be met because of many gains of demonetization uh, for example because the black money has been hit there is a better tax expected to be a better tax compliance at the same time a lot of money is going to come under the amnesty scheme if you remember there is a cash voluntary disclosure scheme that has been announced so government is going to get large amount of money and there would be to some extent roughly speaking about 30,000 crore will come from RBI as a special bonus because some of the liabilities would be extinguished because of the demonetization let's not go into the technical details the point is government revenues are going to increase even for this year now what is happening this year government revenues are going to be increased and uh, while the expenditure has not been controlled as much as it was expected there would be so much higher revenues uh, even in the current year what has happened is direct tax revenues have taken a hit they are going to be lower than expected but indirect tax revenues are going to be more why indirect tax revenues are going to be more because of the benefit the oil bonanza the oil prices have been falling and government has not been passing off those benefits to the people at large and therefore from excise duty large amount of revenue is going to come which means that although there would be a shortfall in the direct taxes the indirect tax revenues would be higher more than compensating for the shortfall and as a result the target of 3.5 percent of gdp would be met so this would be a great fiscal marksmanship of the government so the first question is what would be the uh, whether the targeted gdp for current year would be met targeted uh, fiscal deficit as a ratio of gdp the target of 3.5 percent would that be met the answer my answer is yes it would certainly be met the second most important question is uh, what is going to be the target for the next year as i have been as i have said just now government is going to get lot of extra money therefore it would be easier for the government to maintain the level of fiscal deficit 
Now, there are two different points of view here. You know, earlier we had decided, the government had decided that fiscal deficit for the year 2017-18 and 18-19 would be brought to 3% of GDP. So from 3.5%, our target would be 3.3%. Now that's a huge and very ambitious target. So finance minister, in the meantime, what has happened is that one high-powered committee which was appointed by the government under the chairmanship of N.K. Singh, uh, they have recommended, uh, uh, they have reviewed the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act, FRBM, and they have said that it should be close to 3%, uh, but over a period of time it should come down to 3%. Now, there is a dilemma for the government. On the one hand, government is going to get a lot of uh, extra revenues uh, because of demonetization. At the same time, they, having met the target of 3.5, they want to continue the fiscal consolidation process. That means they have to bring it down further. Why do they have to bring it down further? Because although the central government has successfully brought it down to 3.5%, overall fiscal deficit of the country that means fiscal deficit of the central government and all the states together it's still quite large uncomfortably large at six and a half percent so if you add the center and states all together their combined fiscal deficit is six and a half percent which is on the high side so there is a need to continue with the fiscal consolidation process with the central government here is the dilemma should the target for the next year be 3% or should it be somewhere between 3% to 3.5%? My own projection, my own expectation is that the finance minister will take the middle path, Madhyam Marg, and he will place the target at 3.2%. If he puts it at 3.2%, I'll be very happy because with the additional, additional money that is coming in the government coffers and the target of 3.2 percent i think it would be possible to release large amount of resources for the benefit of those who have been aff adversely affected because of demonetization particularly the poor uh, the rural sector and also the lower middle class and even upper middle class to some extent uh, so that is something that is to be expected. Here is a question uh, from Nikhil Sudhakar Shirsat, uh, which says, uh, is there a chance of changing the taxation slab? Uh, it is not slap, it is slab. You have said slap. Slap means fatka. This is not what we are talking about. We are talking about slab. So there are slabs, building the slabs. There are again uh, two possibilities. If the fiscal deficit target is put at 3.2%, I think it would be possible for the government without losing the fiscal def discipline, they can actually lower the taxes. Do you know what is my proposal? I don't know what will be in the budget. That only we will know on 1st of February. But my proposal is this. My proposal is as follows. That... Uh, Today, up to 2.5 lakh rupees, there is no tax. I am saying that that limit should be raised to 5 lakhs. No tax up to rupees 5 lakh income. That is one. Second, between 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs, there should be 10% income, 10% uh, income tax. Between 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs, there would be 20% income tax. And for 20 to 30 lakh, uh, more than uh, 20 lakh income, there should be 30% tax. So we are talking about changing the slab. I will repeat, my proposal is this. This is not necessarily accepted. We do not know. But my proposal is up to 5 lakhs. You can show it, sir. Hmm. You can show the table. Yeah, I can show you the table. This is what my proposal is. Uh, no, no, you can, you can see my proposal. No, no, can, uh, okay, but it's very simple. Up to 5 lakhs, no tax. We're talking about direct taxes. Up to 5 lakhs, no tax. Between 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs, 10%. Between 10 lakhs and 20%, uh, 20 lakhs, 20%. And above 20 lakhs, 30%. 
this is one change that is possible and I would love to see that happen. Whether it happens or not, we will know only on 1st of February. In addition to that, I feel that there is a need to encourage personal savings. You know, after reaching 36% of GDP as our national saving rate, it has come down. We are now around 30% and we need to jack it up. How do we improve the savings, personal savings of people? Uh, I'm proposing two things there. First of all, the tax exemption under ATC, that is personal investment that you are making in mutual funds and uh, specified securities. Under ATC, whatever exemptions are there available under ATC, that should be, that is currently the limit is 2 lakhs, that should be raised to 5 lakhs. So up to 5 lakhs of your investment under ATC, uh, that should be exempted. Uh, the second one, and this is about the housing, that the proposal that I want to give is this, that the interest, the exemption limit on interest on housing loans for self-occupied properties under the section 224 of uh, the Income Tax Act, that should be raised from 1.5 lakhs as at present to 3.5 lakhs. So the interest exemption, the interest that you pay on housing, there is an exemption limit of only 1.5 lakhs. That a large number of lower and lower middle class people are under the weight of it paying the huge interest burden on housing loans. If we raise that li exemption limit from 1.5 lakhs to 3.5 lakhs, it will give a large relief to large number of people and that is something that should be considered. Uh, there is another view that there should be no change in the slabs at all, no change in the structure, but bring back, bring back what was called standard deduction earlier. So there would be a certain amount of standard deduction that would be introduced. We do not know what path they will take, but I certainly hope that uh, they will accept uh, this kind of lower tax rate in the hope of greater compliance. We are moving towards greater compliance, so it would uh, certainly work. This is about the income taxes. Let's talk about, yeah, uh, I need more questions from you, so keep asking questions. Uh, there is this question about can EMI for housing loan decrease? Yes. Certainly it can decrease. I think I think that the interest rates, you know, the, the budget is going to be created in such a way, interest rates are not prescribed, but it will create a situation. It, the process has already begun. The interest rates can come down, in my opinion, in the next four months, interest rates can come down by one and a half to 1.75 percentage point. One percentage point decline of interest rate means EMI coming down by about 15%. So if it is, if the interest rates come down by 1.75%, which I think is desirable, not only desirable, but imminently feasible, what will happen is that the EMI would come down by 25 to 30%. And that means additional purchasing power in the hands of people for to the extent of 25% that will give the push to the economy. So the slowing down of growth to some extent that has happened will turn around and economy would again manufacturing, small scale industries, all of them will can get a big push with this, uh, I, I hope. And that is something that I expect. Uh, can sales tax be decreased? You know, uh, these are the taxes. I talked about the direct taxes. In that, I talked about the income taxes. What about indirect taxes? As far as the indirect taxes are concerned, uh, earlier hope was that GST will be uh, operational from 1st April 2017. By all indications, GST is not going to become operational by 1st April. The earliest that we hope that can happen is 1st of July 2017. Please note that Technically speaking, the time limit for introduction of GST is 16th of September 2017. If until 16th of September 2017, GST is not uh, made operational, uh, there would be a constitutional crisis. 
So right now the situation is that they are expecting the GST to be operational uh, by 1st of July 2017 and therefore in the budget you will find that there would be hardly any change made in the indirect taxes because whatever change they make that will remain valid only for three months or so. Uh, the real thing there is GST which is hopefully going to become operational on, uh, on, on, operational on 1st of uh, uh, July 2017, that is most likely. While I'm expecting uh, more questions, Swapnil Kamle says, what about interest rate on FD? Good question. Interest rate on FDs are going to come down. Now you will say, you see what has happened is very interesting. Uh, general perception of people is this, that when we deposit the money with the bank, we must get highest possible interest. At the same time, when you go to borrow, you want to have the lowest possible interest. Friends, that is just not possible. Because banks operate on the basic principle, either ka mal udhar, right? So the average lending rate would have to be higher than the average borrowing rate for the banks. However, so what has happened in India is that the interest rate reduction cycle in India started in June to uh, January 2015. Now, during this period from January 2015 to December 2016, how many times RBI lowered the interest rate? Number of times. It brought down, it brought down the interest rates, policy rates by 1.75 percentage point. So, 175 basis point but banks played a game here what banks did was they did not pass on that benefit to the borrowers what they did was with the policy rates of rbi going down they reduced the deposit rates by 170 basis points but they did not lower the lending rates so after the 31st December speech by the Honorable Prime Minister where he exhorted, he appealed to the banks to respond. State Bank reduced the interest rate by 0.9 percentage points and many other banks followed. And I hope that in February policy uh, by RBI, there would be a further indication of lower policy rate and that would also be followed up by the banks and therefore I expect in the next 4-5 months, interest rates to come down by 1.5 to 1.75 percentage point. Uh, so that is what is expected. There is a question from uh, uh, Nitish Avhare. Uh, he is saying, is GST going to be useful for citizens of India? GST is a dream reform for which for last several years we have been fighting and uh, it has gone through many ups and downs and finally it was approved in principle. But there are technical things to be sorted out uh, still further. But I can tell you that since Dr. Manmohan Singh started the 1991 historic reforms, GST is the biggest reform in the taxation that is going to take place. We have finally approved it. It is not perfect. It is far less than perfect. However, we have achieved that. And as we go on, we will go on perfecting uh, that. Now, for example, basic principle of GST is one country, one economy, one economy, one market, one market, one indirect tax. That is not going to happen to begin with. So we will have three, four different taxes and then they will be merged together over a period of time. So GST is a great reform and it will be very, very useful for the economy as a whole. Uh, Tushar Bhosle is saying, sir, what do you think about proper implementation of policy? Are they reach, do they reach to the last of the society? Now, this is a different problem altogether and I completely share your feelings uh, uh, that uh, implementation really holds the key. The devil is really in the details. Many times good policies, uh, if not properly implemented, the benefits do not reach the people where they are supposed to reach. That is where... You know, uh, a lot of that is where the parliament is there. That is where social organizations, writers, and everybody should be writing about it and putting pressure on the government to make sure that it reaches people. Uh, one of the major changes that is taking place, you know, there, there was this story a long time back. Rajiv Gandhi saying that out of one rupee spent, only 16 paise actually reach. Now, one way out 
is direct benefit transfer and that is going to be adopted in bigger and bigger way direct benefit transfers going directly to the accounts of the people means that the leakages the corruption the leakages will be plugged and the money will be directly deposited to aadhar linked bank accounts and that is why jandhan accounts have come up and there is a big financial inclusion so more and more the benefits would be directly credited to the accounts of the people and therefore the leakages will come down but as far as the scheme implementation is concerned uh, we need watchdogs to have this properly properly implementing the schemes and people like me will always raise issues in the parliament and hammering the government about why this has not been done and why this has not that has not been done so uh, that is something that really up to us what will be the uh, kalpesh has asked a question what will be the impact on fdi uh, there are a lot of people you know we we have enough Uh, people who are uh, uh, prophets of doom uh, for example uh, when when the, this whole thing started do you know that i was the only one who was saying that the bad effect would be mild almost everybody was saying the effect would be huge first of all my own guru dr manmohan singh said that the gdp growth rate of india will go down by 2 percentage points by 2 percentage points uh, that's what he said after that uh, vivek kumar uh, Uh, the the famous professor who is known to have worked only on black money Arun, all his life arun, arun kumar in a in a, a debate on rajya sabha tv uh, with me he said that gdp will come down by 5 percentage point i was the only one who was saying that the maximum reduction in gdp that to temporarily will be 1 percentage point for the current year from next year will bounce back and will achieve higher growth now after that what has happened in the last 10 days is that imf has come out with their expectation world bank has come out with their expectation and both of them have endorsed that gdp will come down by 1 percentage point no more for this year and it will bounce back in the next year regrettably most newspapers have given the headline not about gdp bouncing back next year but that there is going to be decline this year well it is a, we are aware that it is going to fall but it is not going to fall by 2 2 percentage point 3 or 5 percentage point that kind of thing is not going to happen so the effect adverse effect is going to be minimal this is very important uh now then then there is a question is this a good time to invest in uh, real estate let me go to earlier question job opportunity in india uh what will be the effect of uh, i will come back to all these questions what will be the impact on fdi FDI, unlike the FII, that is foreign institutional investment, FDI is more stable. What FDI does basically, FII, that is the investment in shares and debentures, etc. Uh, FII uh, is very finicky. It is very finicky in the sense that. with the slightest rumor also people withdraw their money from the stock market and take take it away. That doesn't happen for FDI. FDI those who are investing in India in terms of FDI they would always have a medium to long term horizon so they are not unstable like FII and i think demonetization has given a very strong signal to the rest of the world including our potential foreign direct investors that we mean business and we mean to do what we claim that we are launching this big attack on black money and something which is politically very very difficult has been done and it has been implemented taking everybody by surprise now this gives a very good signal to fdi fdi investors potential investors that here in the country which is trying to overcome their problems and putting their house in proper order that will promote fdi it will not reduce fdi so that is going to be the impact on fdi then there was this question uh, then there was the question uh, is this a good time to invest in real estate i am not going to be an advisor to anybody about investment but i can tell you that my own proposal to the government has been that more money you get more money that government is going to get that should be linked with affordable housing scheme for 2022 you know uh, a scheme was announced under pradhan mantri awas yojana uh, it said that uh, 
basically affordable houses for all by the year 2022. I believe that a large number of uh, large amount of funds which are being generated should be linked with the affordable housing scheme. So what will happen is that not only large number of houses would be created for the poor and for the lower middle class uh, fulfilling their dreams. It will also take away all the whatever little negativity is still there. And what is most important is that it will give a major push to the construction industry. It would create large number of jobs besides giving the houses. And you know what will happen is that not only our growth rate will go back to where it was earlier before demonetization, that is 7.5%, but it will happen with large number of jobs created. So it would be more robust and more sustainable growth in future. Remember that when we were taking a pride and boasting that uh, our GDP growth rate is one of the highest in the world, that was true. But what was the job creation? You know, every year 12.8 million people enter our job market. How many of the young people actually find jobs? Very few. And that is a ticking time bomb. We don't want only high growth. We want high growth with larger creation of jobs. And I believe that by linking the additional expenditure, additional income with the government, with the affordable housing scheme, we are going to be able to achieve that. The growth will be enhanced manufacturing sector will be uh, promoted small scale industry would be promoted construction sector will get a boost and in this process very large number of jobs can be created that is what the aim should be whether it happens in the budget i do not know uh, tushar bhosle has uh, what is the impact of gold uh, this is very good gautam taide has asked this question what is the impact on gold if purchasing during the upcoming budget. No, we are not talking about purchasing. Again, I don't want to be your consultant. But please understand the role of, you know, we talk so much about black money. Do you realize how much of money is stuck in gold in India? You know, in, in India, RBI has something like 565 tons of gold. And in the private hands, especially the uh, female folks of our population, the craze about gold that India has, no other country in the world has, no other country. And how much gold do we have? Something like conservative estimate is about 25,000 tons. How much gold do we have in our temples? Something like 10 to 15,000 tons. So we are talking about 35 to 40,000 tons of gold. Please understand that barring a small part of the gold stocks which are actually used for making ornaments and export, most of it is a dead stock. And we cannot afford so much of wealth sunk in a dead asset like gold. So we have to monetize that gold. We have to convert that into money. We have to convert that gold and make it work for the country. Right now it is kind of dead asset. Imagine how much money would be liberated, how much wealth would be liberated for construction, constructive purposes if we come out of the gold. But we are not. That is why some rules have been made about the gold holding in future. Now every year, everybody knows that we import about 1000 tons of gold and one third of that is paid for in cash. So if we want to stop this menace of black money, we have to stop the con to control that and the gold must be brought out. First, to begin with, the gold in the temples must be brought out and make it work for the country. Then the there should be incentives to, uh, uh, to, to, to provide, to come bring out the gold which is kept under lock and key as a dead asset and make it work for the country. You know, we don't look need to look for foreign direct investment if we can do that. I'm not saying that we should not have foreign direct investment, but what are we doing? We have to work on all fronts, including FDI and including releasing the gold stocks that we have. Now, whether you want to buy gold uh, during the budget, I'm not going to advise you on that at all. Uh, when banks will discreet when banks will decrease the rates of interest. Banks have already started the process uh, in the February. This is a question by Nikhil Ugale. Uh, uh, 
what when banks will reduce the decrease the rate of interest and what is your opinion banks have already started after 31st december speech by uh, the honorable prime minister immediately the next day state banks started reducing other banks have also followed the suit although they need to follow that further and bring down the interest rate by 0.9 percentage point even before demonetization they should have done that after demonetization now please understand Banks have really got it made now. There is something like 13.5 lakh crore rupees which have come into the banks. And what is the cost of borrowing? See, banks are kind of borrowing funds. Those are liabilities of the bank, right? What is the average cost? Only 3%. Because on current account, they have to give 0% interest rate. And on a savings account, they have to pay 4% interest rate. So weighted average of the cost of raising funds for the banks is only 3%. So with so much money coming in, they have to learn to survive and while lending, the interest rate would have to be lower because their own cost of raising funds is as low as between 3 to 4%. So I see no reason why interest rates can come down dramatically over the next few days. Abhijit Shirsat is asking, do you think this is a good decision of demonetization? I have answered that in several of my programs, uh, including earlier Facebook chats. Please go and look at them and you will find how I have defended that. Uh, then why the government do not use their right to use gold stocks in temples? I think they should, uh, but it will require... I think, I think they, they should be doing that. Um, uh, but it requires another political will, political courage. Uh, I hope uh, they will do it uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, then there is a uh, lot of other things. Uh, there is a lot of other things uh, that you must understand that black money, the attack on black money has just started and it has to go further. And there are many more things. People are asking, is this all the black money will go away? No, in a country like, complex country like India, by one policy major, you don't clean all the problems. But we have made a very strong beginning and that has to be supported. So there are many things. Now take the case of uh, encouragement to digitalization. You know, why are we doing that? A lot of people are under the impression that we are moving towards cashless economy. Absolutely wrong. We are not moving towards cashless economy. We are moving towards less cash economy. The proportion of cash to GDP in India is 12.5%. In most advanced countries, it is about 4 to 5%. If we can bring down our proportion of currency to total GDP from 12.5% to 7 8%, that by itself would be a big achievement. Why would it be a big achievement? It would mean that the money which is sloshing around, the money which has been hidden uh, in the cupboards and in the floors and in ceilings and what have you, all that money coming into the bank gives a big financial inclusion. Why are they, what am I, am I expecting in the budget? I am expecting in this budget that there would be a carrot and stick kind of approach. Those who are using cash will be penalized and those who are using digital payments would be encouraged. I am willing to go far as far as saying that this budget may actually put a restriction on how much money you can withdraw in cash. That is, it is expected that about 33 lakhs would be a possibly a limit to which you can withdraw money from your own bank in cash. And most importantly, I would not be surprised if the finance minister brings in a rule that nobody, nobody can hold their wealth in the form of cash more than 15 lakh rupees. There were many committees have made many recommendations, but this one is very important one which may happen. So the government may decide that if you keep in your house anything more than 15 lakh rupees as a cash, you are in trouble because that would be illegal. Not only you will be penalized, but that cash will be taken away by the government, by law, not by uh, any other means, but anything more than 15 lakh. So the cash will become, you know, cash must keep moving in the economy. That is what turns the wheel of the economy. And that is what creates growth and development. And therefore, in the process of attack, 
This kind of thing will happen. What is the difference between a cash transaction and a digital transaction? Remember that in the cash transaction, you cannot tra keep track. Whereas in digital transaction, you can keep track. You can keep track of the entire scheme of transaction. Therefore, the taxes cannot be avoided. Even ordinary human citizens, when they go to a shop and when they are asked, Aapko receipt chahiye kya? And sometimes people say, nee, nee, receipt nahi chahiye. So they save the tax. That is creating black money. So you should not create black money like that. Willy-nilly, without realizing, you are creating black money by letting the person evade the tax. So don't do that. Whenever you make a digital payment, and some people were saying that this is, be, this is being done for benefiting some private companies, and some people came up with this theory that pay to him is pay to Narendra Modi. Absolute nonsense. Now the government's own appliance has come called Bheem, and that appliance is cost-free. So nobody can say that this was done and this is government's own apparatus, uh, government's own app. So now nobody can say that this has been old thing has been done to uh, benefit some private companies. So that kind of thing has to be avoided and you know, it's an irresponsible statement. We should avoid that. What we should be doing is moving towards a cashless economy. Please remember cash will never go away. Never go away. Cash will be there for everything you cannot use credit card. It will never go away, but the proportion which is 12.5% will come down to 6 or 7% and that by itself would be a major achievement. It will take much longer time for us to really go towards the cashless society. But some people are creating this mistaken impression uh, that we are going to go completely cashless. No such thing is going to happen from 12.5%. If we can come to 7%, I think that would be by itself a great achievement. Um, Balaji Gadhve has said, Sir, from this time, rail budget is included in uh, what kind of things should we expect from the railway development? I do not know, but um, railway ministry is doing very well under the leadership of Suresh Prabhu. Um, I think uh, it will have uh, provision, enough provision would be made for the expansion and I think more provisions have to be made for security. Security in the railway has become a major issue, uh, taking at the accidents. Services are already improved, uh, but for a very long time, the passenger fares have not been uh, raised uh, because of the political reasons. In fact, the railway unions, if I understand right, they are saying, you please raise it. Uh, but it's still not been done. Maybe this time uh, that can happen. Uh, Dr. Nilesh uh, Rosekar is saying, uh, but demonetization hampered common man, no politician and officers. No, that's not true at all. It was create it created a temporary dislocation, temporary inconvenience, but in the medium to long term, it is going to help in a very, very big way. Has it not hurt politicians? Then why are the politicians so critical about it? You know, we know the politicians who are uh, rolling in money, many politicians. They are rolling in money and they are the ones who are talking against uh, this. And this is very bad uh, for the common man. You know, it's, it's an uh, ironical uh, thing. Please understand that if, if the common man was really against uh, demonetization, as some of these politicians are saying, uh, then they should have been very happy that the elections are taking place now because they would get the benefit. But they are also opposing that, that the election should not, I mean, the budget should not have been uh, on the eve of the uh, state elections in five states. There is an obvious contradiction in that. They know in the heart of heart. Please understand that people were happy with demonetization. And ordinarily, people were saying that, Achha ho gaya, ye bade ko jhatka mil gaya. Hum asuvidha seher lenge. Lekin inko jhatka mila, ye achha ho gaya. The only point when people started, some people started feeling bad, and I fully sympathize with them, is that when they said that we are standing in the queue for five hours, six hours, uh, and we don't get money, uh, by the time our turn comes, the bank says that the money is uh, over, uh, but from the back door, some unscrupulous bank officials gave money to people. Now, that has made some people very angry. That should not even happen should not have happened and those unscrupulous elements must be brought to books but in principle generally now i had predicted the in the first week after demonetization that all these queue business would be over by 31st of this uh, december and right now that has already happened that has, that has already happened the, 
one mistake that was made in my personal opinion is that 500 rupee note new 500 rupee note should have come before the new 2000 rupee note in many places 2000 rupee note coming first created a problem because with 2000 rupee note you 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 uh, you buy something worth 150 rupees and where is the change for that so tutu mai mai was happening because of that that was the only mistake a lot of people say that the advance preparation was not done you know uh, there are many questions like that that the scheme was good but uh, the advance preparation was not made absolute nonsense what preparation can be done can you prepare everything ahead of time in a complex country like india when the historic decision is made let's take the case of atm in the atm machine there are three beans 100 rupee 500 rupee 1000 rupee and they are very sensitive to the weight and size now suppose in anticipation rbi had issued a circular that all the beans should be changed in terms of size and sensitivity to make it 100 rupee 500 rupee and 2000 rupee then where would the secrecy be so the government had to on one hand they had to prepare themselves and then on the other hand they had to also maintain secrecy so at some point of time the golden mean suvarna madhya was achieved by striking on 8th of november it could not have been the recalibration of atm machines could not possibly have started before 8th november it was started on 9th november and rbi did that meticulously on on war footing and now all the atms are completely in order so whatever preparation could be done was done but they could not go on waiting for the entire preparation to be done because it would have compromised the uh, secrecy angle and if the secrecy was not maintained the scheme would not have worked so well that it has actually worked uh, arun keskar please sir please opinion about this budget my friend you have joined late, late. i have been speaking for what uh, uh, already about 50 minutes on this so uh, you will have to uh, see the video of that uh, sanjay banker has asked what good effect will be on education of demonetization um, demonetization effect on higher education would be quite simply uh, demonetization will give government large additional resources and part of those resources can certainly be diverted to the much starved education sector particularly higher education sector sumit bhosle sir what other measures do you suggest to curb black money this is very important many measures remember this is only a beginning the next target should be election financing that is that is going to be the next should be the next target in my opinion do you know today you know so much change is required do you know today that all the contributions made to the uh, election campaign of less than 20000 rupees there is no record of that no record because it, they can be anonymous so somebody has published data you sh you should see that data for most political parties particularly for regional parties the regional parties almost 100% below 20000 uh, but even for national parties bjp congress Uh, all parties they have 70 to 80 percent of their funds coming for election purposes, which are unaccounted for. They do not know where those funds are coming because the People's Representation Act of 1951 says that any donation up to 20,000 cannot be need not be declared. I think. the people's representation act of 1951 would have to be amended and every single rupee made as a donation to the political party must be must be announced must be recorded and now that we are talking about digital payment the payment should be made digitally and it should be put on the website so there are many other changes which are required but to my mind election financing should be the next target uh Uh, kalpesh is asking what can we expect direct and indirect taxes on bank transactions in budget of or future budget yes i i said that there would be encouragement to uh, uh, digital payment and there would be discouragement to uh, banking transactions in terms of withdrawal of cash i think some kind of transaction tax is going to come so if you withdraw money in terms of cash you will have beyond a particular limit you will have to pay fees for that nominal fees but you will have to pay so they will make it more difficult and give disincentive 
for those who are trying to withdraw cash and they will on the other hand give the cash uh, uh, prizes and uh, ca uh, ca uh, uh, return cash kind of schemes will come for digital payments. So the moral of the story is very clear. We should be moving away from cash payments to digital payment without becoming completely cashless. Uh, Parag Ghargi is saying, will it help to get all black money from most of the people? Due to this, will it help poor people for buying their own home? Certainly will be. I'm saying that very large amount of money which government is going to get because of the better tax, tax compliance, that should be licked up with the government scheme of affordable housing for all by 2022. If, if these two things are linked with each other, uh, there would be a lot of funding available for housing for the poor and the benefits will definitely reach the poor. Uh, what other question? Uh, Uma Maha Maheswaran has asked, Sir, people feel Modi government is helping only Ambani's and Adani's to make money, especially Markande Kaju. Uh, what is your stand on this? Uh, I have no stand on uh, Markande Kaju and I do not, he has recently, for your information, uh, publicly uh, apologized to the Supreme Court for some of the uh, statements that he made. Uh, so on a person, uh, a loose cannon like that, I do not waste my breath on talking about that. Uh, as far as uh, uh, helping the rich is concerned, I do not uh, really buy that because if you remember, one of the serious uh, national leaders was saying that all this digital payment business is brought in to help companies like Paytm, pay to, pay to Modi was uh, the explanation of Paytm, but government has come out with uh, a Beam, beam uh, app, uh, apply, you know, uh, app uh, where the, it is government's own uh, app where the transactions will take place in a costless manner. So where is the benefit going to uh, private companies? So it is okay for some people to make irresponsible statement, but you should not be asking me to comment on the irresponsible statement made by irresponsible people. Subha, Shubham Kumar Sarkar, Sir, what can be done uh, so that the entire burden of tax, taxation doesn't get loaded on merely 10% of the population? Is it not unfair? I agree with you, it is unfair. We need to have much broader tax base. You just ask yourself this question. In a country, and this was the number that uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi actually used in his 31st December speech. Uh, how many people in India have shown their income to be more than 10 lakh? Only 24 lakh individuals. What is the population of India? It is close to 130 crore people. Out of 130 crore people, would you, can you with a stretch of imagination believe that only 24 lakh people have income of more than 10 lakhs? Just count the cars in our country, cars worth more than 10 lakh. They would be in, literally in millions. And we have only 24,000 people, uh, 24 lakh people saying that their income is more than 10 lakhs. It is very sad. Amartya Sen said that, uh, you know, this scheme makes every Indian, suspects every Indian uh, as a criminal. It's all right for him to say. But when you see this number, that out of 130 crore people, only 24 lakh people are declaring income of more than 10 lakh rupees. It is a cruel joke. The tax base has to grow. Those of you who want the tax rates to come down must understand that tax base has to grow. And that, you know, the, everything that is being done now and what will be done in the budget is to show that honesty should be on premium and dishonesty should deserve penalty. That is the basic sutra that I think this government is trying to follow and which I completely agree. Uh, Nikhil Ugre has said, sir, after 80 days, still the bank withdrawal restriction. Because the money which has been deposited in the bank is being inspected. In those accounts where disproportionately large amount of money has been deposited, that is being verified and inspected. Because, you know, if your average holding was 1,000 rupees in your bank, and suddenly you have a credit of 3.5 lakh rupees, that will raise issue. So, 
right now the income tax authorities are screening all the accounts to see where there is anomaly where there are large amount of credits made in accounts which had very small transactions earlier after that process is over the money will be allowed to be withdrawn that is why government is going little slow on that if they allow money to be withdrawn then it would mean that the what was the black money in the old currency will become black money in the new currency that government is not going to allow uh, Kalpesh has asked another question 7% growth harder than ever for India or any other country for 2017 is it correct I am saying that in the year 2017-18 our growth rate would be back to where it was that is 7.5% and if we play it right in the next 3 to 5 years it will go on increasing and if all goes well in next 5 years it's my vision that we will cross the magical target of 10% growth for our country. I think we are going to stop here. Uh, there is one question, uh, uh, political question. Sir, once you said the ideology of Congress is closer to that of Ambedkar, uh, have you changed your stance? Have you joined BJP? No, sir. Sunny Bansode, I have not joined BJP and I have no intention of joining any political party. I am a professional. I am going to work as a professional. Although I am sitting in, Lok, uh, in a Rajya Sabha, I do not belong to any political party. I am not a political leader. I am equidistant from all political parties. And whatever, I am a professional and whatever is good for the country, whatever Dr. Ambedkar has taught me, Whatever I have learned, I am going to use my learning and my experience in the interest of the country. Whether it is coming from this party or that doesn't matter. What for me, it is only country that comes first. Remember what Dr. Ambedkar had said. He had said that you must be Indian first and Indian at the last and must be Indian in the interregnum as well. So you are not congressman, not BJP man. I am an Indian first, I am Indian at the last, as Dr. Ambedkar had said, and in the transition, I would remain Indian and work as an Indian in whatever way I can to contribute to the national economic growth and development. I thank all of you. Thank you very much for uh, your questions. And we'll come back uh, to each other soon uh, and have uh, maybe immediately after the budget, uh, we will actually see here we discussed what to expect and what not to expect. Maybe after the budget, within a week, we will have a show where we'll talk about how does the budget actually look, how good it is or how bad it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.